Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Since making it to the Divine Realm and killing the Divine Dragon, we come back and find that night has fallen and Ashina is burning. The castle on the outskirts looks like Sherman's March to the Sea. And to make matters worse, Ishin Ashina is dead. Lord Ishin, what happened? Lord Ishin has succumbed to his illness and passed away. Hmm. I see. I'm sure you sensed it. The central forces have taken this opportunity to attack the castle. And the divine heir? Here. The key to the secret passage that leads out of Ashina Castle. The secret passage can be found at the end of the moat in the Ashina Reservoir, not far from the Moonview Tower. Kuro has escaped the castle through the passage, and the wolf looks to join him there. This key, my lord, has escaped the castle through the secret passage? Yes, Master Wolf. The secret passage can be found along the moat in the Ashina Reservoir, not far from the Moonview Tower. Lord Kuro escaped the castle through that secret passage, and should be waiting for you in the silver grass field. Understood. The Nightjar have left smoke signals on the roofs under Lord Ishin's orders. The smoke should lead the way to Lord Kuro. Lord Kuro escaped the castle through the secret. The secret. He is waiting for the night job. The smoke. Shin Master Wolf. What is it? I pray that Lord Kuro achieves humanity. Yes. I pray that Lord. So Ishin dies in the interior ministry decides to launch an all-out attack and raise Ashina. And again, this is coming on the back of our hard work clearing the castle the very first time we were here. It let them spill in through the cracks in the defense the first time, and now this. I will be borrowing you. Free my Rovan. We, the Ashina clan, will win this battle. This mini-boss is the hardest mini-boss in the game, and I am not kidding. Look at that damage. You can't make him flinch. Remember, that's the side effect of the red eyes. He does, like, three things, but he does them really well. Uh, you also take huge chip damage if you do not block that perfectly. That sword draw. Like, that's massive. If your timing is even a little bit off, he can really, really chew through you. But that's really it. It's this, which is nasty. It's sometimes a single strike or that overhead. And then the perilous sweep. But it's all so dangerous. Ooh, and sometimes he'll, uh... Try to open your guard by pushing you. That enemy is so dangerous! But also, we have to get him for one of the last three prayer beads. We have precious little left to do, because we've been running all over the place getting a million different MacGuffins for the remaining three endings. Uh, which we'll see by the end of this episode. First, we're going to make our way to the outskirts instead of uh, following the Nightjar smoke signals back to the reservoir and the silver grass fields where the game began. Uh, we have two more prayer beads to go now, and a few bosses left. We have to wrap up just a handful of NPC side quests, and then we'll be on to those three endings. So, the next prayer bead and the next few side quests that we have to finish will be right along here as we head towards the outskirts, which is also going to be where our penultimate boss is. An optional penultimate boss at that. And a super challenging one. Look at this guy waiting for someone to round that corner. Didn't expect a wolf to just drop from the sky. And even though we can target all of these Ashina soldiers, they are 
kind of just cowering away from the fight. Or hunched over dying. Uh, so we're going to come back out here, which is near the grave to Takeru and Tomoe. And head down towards the rooftops where we met Black Hat Badger in the first place. We progressed his side quest uh, where we found him at the grave of his son. And then he came back to Ashina. Okay, that's the aggro on the bridge. Damn it! I didn't think that they would be sniping at me from the bridge, but luckily, Badger did finish his monologue, his dying breath, to Tenkichi from Badger. The Mi the Mibu pilgrimage balloon. And his last round. Oh! We locked onto the wrong enemy. Why? I can't I, I don't even want to attack them. They're not gonna attack me. I can't. What the fuck? There's like a little spot on the bridge I can't move past. Seems like he's stuck there too. Okay, I don't know what that was. It's like Wolf's foot got caught. Ashina will rise again. We still have a lot of these dual wielding uh, red clad samurai to deal with before we can get on to the next prayer bead and get deeper into the outskirts in the backtracking round. But we can mostly pick them off one by one. Like we'll climb up here, we won't really get a chance to shoot, and we don't want to get spotted there. Oop. He must have come around uh, the corner to my right, or the one right behind me now. That's nice, though. We got them all separated. Just want to make sure that's the one. Yeah, he was patrolling back there. I just caught him at a good time. And then usually there's one more waiting around this corner. Uh, we could jump up and come down on him or jump behind him for a stealth kill. But there are some enemies in the field where we fought a mini boss way earlier in the game who would probably notice that. And I'm trying to do my best right now to just get as many 1v1 matchups as I can. Okay, so there's now just the mini boss. And a really sneaky bell guy waiting to ring a, an alert gong uh, over here on the rooftop. But it should be pretty easy to sneak behind him along here. Ooh, he kind of glimpsed me from his periphery. That's okay. Uh, this mini boss with the penultimate prayer bead is really just a reskin of Juzo the Drunkard, or uh, who is the other one from the Sunken Valley? Something the Glutton. So since we fought Juzo twice now, we've technically fought this enemy four times, except the big difference is that instead of poison, this one's gimmick is fire. So we can light his blade on fire. Uh, we're gonna give him the runaround, 
until that buff on his weapon wears off just because we don't want to take the chip damage or the burning effect. And that's pretty easy to do. He's slow and clumsy. And the buff doesn't last that long. Whoops. He's holding the stick just a little bit as I jumped, so I didn't go straight up. Oh, there was one more. What the f... I got really lucky with that. With him somehow not noticing the big battle going on. So I was still able... Ooh. Still able to just stealth kill him. Wicked and clean instead of turning this into a 2v1. Oh, you're gonna light it on fire. That's some three hits. And he's getting there. He's almost dead. We have no more Phantom Kunai, though. Would make this easier. Okay, good. I was looking at a little bit close. It's rebuffing so. Oh! Huh. I guess he can't refresh the duration on the buff until it runs out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. Thought that would track a little bit more. Come on! Oh, there we go. We have one more prayer bead left in the whole game. And now there's very little standing between us and something real cool. So remember what was going on back in the uh, dilapidated temple? Last time we were there, the sculptor had, had moved on. Also... Oh... Kataro. We could have let him be happy in the Halls of Illusion, but no. Sir. How uh, are you? What's wrong? Oh, well, well, it's, it's bad. Well, as it turns out, I'm in a bit of a trouble again. Oh, those government bastards. <laughs> I, I made them an offer for them to look the other way. And, uh, they weren't as, uh, amenable as I'd hoped. Oh, they took it all. My money, my stock, everything. But Kotaro drove them away, at least. Right, pal? <laughs> oh, the big guy's fallen asleep. Yes. He's sleeping soundly. Please, don't make that face. There's nothing for you to be sad about, good sir. Oh, that's right. Good sir, I stowed away something good. Something just for you. My last piece of product. <laughs> Interested? An Ashina trade promissory note. Matabe Anayama's last piece of product. Discounts the cost of items when purchasing from merchants. A cent saved is a cent earned, and so long as one draws breath, business will continue. like Anayama. All the, fa the false bravado and unearned confidence and he's just such a grifter. But he's really charming and well acted. Fuck, he rocks. He's such a shitty dirtbag, but I love him. Rest in peace, Anayama. And that is now the end of his side quest as well. And with that, we're gonna make a bit of a sprint. Most of these items, in fact, I think all of them, are just upgrade materials, which we're in the end game now. We don't need those anymore, but look at all the burning claw marks and fire. Okay, good. 
God damn it. I'm trying to have a comfort. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> I don't need to talk to this man that bad. This sculptor's idol does something special when we interact with it. It transports us. Ignore that. You didn't see anything yet. You hear nothing. It's going to be a big surprise when we walk onto that field. Whatever this is. Oh shit, it's a big demon. Kind of like that old woman told us we don't want to fight. A demon of hatred. So the Demon of Hatred is the most similar to a giant Souls or Bloodborne boss. Uh, he's arguably one of, if not the hardest bosses in the game. Uh, so I'll give it a run, do my commentary, and then if I die, I'll just cut to the kill attempt. Uh, where I probably won't be able to talk as much. This one's very tanky and has three phases. That is probably his strongest attack. When you see the danger kanji, you really have to respect that. The best way to deal with it, though, is to jump. Just jump straight over it. It works like 90% of the time. So it is very obvious that this is the sculptor, finally consumed by fire. The sculptor has spent all that time carving wrathful Buddhas and then disappeared from the temple. Uh, this is a Shura. When the sculptor lost his partner, he was consumed by hatred, remember, uh, and almost became a Shura back then, but Ishin cut his arm off where the transformation started. Also, does Emma watching over both him and Sekiro make more sense now? She shows up when Sekiro is on the verge of becoming a Shura in the Shura ending, and she watched over the sculptor too. She trained with Ishin just in case Ashura ever came back into the world. So it could just be the war raging on that triggered the transformation in him, but I think the trigger was the death of Ishin who saved him so long ago. And that's always free hits. Uh, when you do get an opportunity to attack him, don't just take one hit and run. Really dig in. Go for three, sometimes four or five. He'll eventually stagger too and just give you extra hits. That was leaky. Ooh. All right, one health bar down. So no sense attacking into him yet wouldn't take damage, and he would just blow you back eventually. Fuck. I jumped too early there. That was the problem. Now, ah! I didn't recover in time to jump. This is new for this phase. Uh, if you simply side strafe the meteors, that's pretty easy to deal with. Whenever he jumps back, expect him to toss a few fireballs, and then to go into a combo you can get in on him with. Or just go straight into the overhead, that's fine too. Something else you can take advantage of here is that, the malcontent. Uh, remember, we got this from the finger whistle in the valley where he and his partner trained with the monkeys. It drives him insane to hear it. It reminds him of her. Uh, the malcontent can stun a bunch of bosses up to three times, but especially here, it's like using the music box against Gascoigne. Fine confetti has run out. Still, not a bad fight so far. Not bad at all, holy shit. He's realized how good this is going. Really only took that one hit, uh, and then got greedy with our healing, and took another right after because of that. Uh, mostly circle strafing behind him, treating him like any souls boss. Trying to get to his butt side. Uh, circle strafing to his right is really helpful. 
can't really do anything about that. Except try to stomp. And even then, that's not the most effective. Look at that spacing! Oh my god! My spacing is so on point right now! Holy shit! Now, this is the only real new thing he does in this phase. So you, when the danger kanji comes up, and he does the sweep, you jump, let him spin again, and duck the second hit, and then jump one more time on the third go around. Uh, and then it creates this wall of flame for a little bit that makes the arena much more constricted. I thought I was gonna get away with that. Damn. This should be fine. Oh, he just kind of taunted. Perfect. And so yeah, you only get to use the finger whistle stun on him three times, but it is plenty, especially with the fact that once he takes enough damage or enough hits, he'll just stagger naturally. You can almost delete a health bar just through that. Oh, I was kind of expecting him to do the flame carpet. Uh, when he does that, you just jump out of it, either straight up or to the left or right, and then you can grapple onto him. But he's only done it the once in this fight. One, duck, it'll go high, and then jump the second, or the third one. And usually what he likes to do here... What a fucking great fight! What he loves to do after that... ...is retreat behind the Wall of Fire and do a couple of charges. Holy shit, that was perfect. Feeling very good about that. Uh, the one-armed demon prowled the battlefield consumed by flames of deepest resentment. And a lapis lazuli. Okay, so, what we have to do now, the only thing that we have left in the game, is to go back to Ashina Reservoir. I think the best way to do it is by teleporting all the way back to the castle, and then... Oh, no. Uh, it's... Is it right in front of the... Oh no, it's not in uh at the front entrance of the castle. It's down the stairs a little bit. Okay. I'm remembering. So we just have to make our way down. And then it's really just a hop, skip, and a jump. There's again a bunch more upgrade materials and the Ashna forces fighting it out with the interior ministry, and even a few enemies up here, but safe and easy to ignore. This is all our fault. This whole invasion. We just jump down and we're back at the reservoir. Now we just have to make it back to the moat and the secret passage to the silver grass field where we started the game. There is one more prayer bead to get though and it's right here. First we're gonna have to fight a regular enemy version of one of the general mini-bosses? Holy shit. And one of the seven spears. Oh! Huh. I maybe jumped into this without a good plan. Cause, uh, this boy is tankier than- oh. Than expected. Did? What did I tell you? Oh my god! Why am I like this? Easy things look hard, hard things look easy when I'm playing. Holy shit! 
Okay, I only died the once, but I've been going back and resetting looking for a good strategy. And I think I found it. I'm gonna pop a sugar. To stealth between them. And to make this a fair fight right off the bat. Because holy shit. Yeah, it turns out that barging into the two of them with no plan whatsoever is a terrible idea. I always say it. I always say it. The motto of this channel is making easy things look hard and hard things look easy. I should have known this was gonna happen when I had such an easy time with the Demon of Hatred and I one-shotted it. It's the boss that took me the longest time to get down in the whole game. Oh no, that's simple. This fucking chump mini boss though? Oh man, get wrecked. <laughs> oh, it's so good. But it's also very humbling. Because yeah, you might think that you have all this big dick energy and that you can just stomp through regular enemies just because you've, you've stomped a hard boss. No, they'll bring you back down to Earth with the swiftness. God, it's so good! And there is our final prayer necklace. We also never consume this memory, huh? A man who failed to become Shura instead became a vessel for the flames of hatred. As fate would have it, he was bound stubbornly to this world. It wasn't until he became a demon that he was finally able to depart. And that is our final uh, attack upgrade. And to, well, no, I'm immediately wrong. There is actually one more battle memory to get, and it's the final bosses. Our final one before the the end of the game. <laughs> And that's about a few feet away from us. We're right there. Oh, we won't drop down into the drained moat to grab a Mibu Balloon of Spirit. Hey, sure, that's going to be super useful for us. Some more fancy acrobatics. And I'll see you in a second. I have to do a quick little bit of preparation for the three endings coming up. Okay. Let's get going. I love that this brings us back to the silver grass field. You always have to appreciate full circle storytelling like this, especially in this symbolically significant area. This beautiful one, too, with the embers. <laughs> Shinobi of the Divine Air, we meet again. Behold, the second mortal blade. Genichiro. If you think you can change Ashina's fate with such a thing, you are mistaken. Wolf. No one has the right to the dragon's heritage. It is no one's to bear. I wish there was another way. It's all right. One last time. Yes. Let's finish this. I will restore Ashina to glory. This is where I want Ron Howard to just come in as the narrator and say he won't. So it's really cool that even with Genichiro, this comes full circle. Uh, but he is a fucking chump, and we are going to clown him. 
badly. Uh, the only new thing he has now is the, is the Black Mortal Blade, which we learned about from that eavesdropping with Ishin before. Beautiful grandchild, this was your last wish. To see Ashina returned from the great beyond. Now, this is a fight. Oh! <laughs> so, Ishin is the best character in the game, and also the coolest. And just, mmm, seeing the end of that shameful beatdown we put on his grandson makes it so much worse. God, I am in rare form today. Point blank, that should have hit me. And now. Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh my god! Like, he just washes you. Pushes fail grandson's face into the dirt, going, oh, what a horrible disappointment this child is. <laughs> God, this fight rocks, though. The Black Mortal Blade, remember, it's named Open Gate. It brought him back from death by sacrificing him, uh, someone, namely himself, Genichiro. And it also seems like it binds this young Ishin to Genichiro's will. And remember, this is young Ishin. Much like Owl at the top of Ashina Castle versus him in his prime, this is the difference between Ishin Ashina, a dying old man, and Ishin Ashina, the sword saint. This is a FromSoft special at this point. As the fight picks up, so does the weather. There's this sense of environmental drama that complements the fight. Look at that space! <laughs> It's everything. It's the howling wind. It's the silver grass being cut up by the spear sweeps. The embers as Ashina burns. The thunder and lightning rolling in. Ah, oh, damn it! Didn't pay enough attention to the surroundings. God damn, what a fight. This is that other fight that's in my top three. And the other fight that you could argue is probably the hardest in the game, along with Demon of Hatred. This is just the best, though. This is the best. It's a long fight, and every phase is a little bit different, but god damn, it's every part of it's so good. Including that incredible sense of catharsis you get, and that sense of growth when you beat the ever-loving dog shit out of, out of Genichiro? It really makes you feel how far you've come. 
Oh, God. And we're not even at one of the best parts. Oh, I thought that was the sweep incoming. Come on. Just trying to force him to react. Whoop, need to get away. Good. Perfect. Oh my god. Like I said, I'm in rare form on this one. This is feeling like a one shot. Oh. And now, now, the third phase. We bring the storm closer as the fight hits its climax. We incorporate it in a way cooler way than Gale, too. You never really have to worry about getting struck by the lightning. It's just visual. And then it's also there to say, hey, now he has this in his arsenal. Forces us to remember and use an extra mechanic that is so fun to use. The lightning reversal. One more. Oh, I mistimed the second part. So I got shocked instead of uh, sending it back. Woo. And his moveset is so cool. Oh, that's the same thing that happened on the first death. I uh, I took a hit and I didn't quick recover. So I didn't have time to Makiri counter the, the perilous attack. He can put the damage out. I love that. Just the side to side step. It's not it even close to his most dangerous attack. It's just super fun to dodge. It's like the, the shockwave effect on some of those big hits is so cool looking. It's the best, man. This fight. There is no argument they ended this fight as best they could. Oh, hell yeah. We got the angle of the finishing blow that keeps burning the burning of Ashna in frame. Perfect. Oh my god, yes. Do it. Well done. What a video game. Immortality severed. At his peak, Ishin Ashna devoted himself to deadly conflict in pursuit of strength, a single-minded killing machine of a man. Saint Ishin. Saint Ishin. Before we start going through the endings. We have to turn that memory in and get a little bit more on him. What a badass. What a complete badass. Now this is our final memory. Saint Ishin. One who returns from the great beyond does so at the peak of their prosperity. Ishin coveted strength and all manner of techniques throughout his mortal struggle. He wished for a war until his final hour, and that is precisely what he got. So Genichiro's final gambit of using the Black Mortal Blade open gate to kill himself and bring Ishin the Sword Saint back at the peak of his strength failed. And now there is only this. We can give him Divine Dragon's Tears, the Tears in the Ever Blossom, or the Dragon Tears and the Frozen Tears. All leading to different endings. I am at your side. Take the dragon tears.
born Shinobi. Now. Sever these ties of immortality. It is best that you have this. No doubt, the day will come. When a shinobi arrives, seeking strength. Take the dragon tears. I condemn the last immortal. May you live on and embrace what it means to be human. So you're leaving? Yes. I too will live for every moment. And then I will pass on. Just as my shinobi did for me. Lady Emma, I owe much to you as well. side.
take the dragon tears. Must leave this place, my lord. Lord Kuro, may you be at rest. Allow me to hold you in my heart. Everyone? It is time. I must depart. The journey to sever our ties with fate will be a very long one indeed. And yet, you still wish to join us. I do. You have my thanks, Shinobi of the Dragon. Know that Kuro shares my joy. Let us depart to the west. To the birthplace of the Divine Dragon. Oh, that was a lot. Uh, I still want to talk more about Ishin. Because Ishin is very clearly the culmination of everything that From has learned about building a boss fight and context and how to make um, how to make a fight more dramatic and how to add tension and intensity while keeping it challenging and all that stuff, incorporating dynamic multiple phases using the setting to enhance the drama but also to further the story and how to make a boss feel like a final exam to a final boss that is by all of those standards sword saint ishin is one of their all-time best final bosses especially of those like honorable one-on-one -on -one duel types it's just a fucking great fight overall it is a place right up there with Maria and Gale and uh, False King Alant. And really, just take a moment to reflect. It's been eight years since Demon Souls? No, what am I talking about? Uh, Demon Souls was 2009. It's been a decade. It has been a decade since then. Really take a hard look back at the progenitor of this style of fight in Miyazaki's games. Uh, and one of the straight up best bosses in Demon Souls. It was False King Alant, the final boss of Boletaria Castle, widely considered to be the final actual fight, like the final fight fight of the game. Just compare the drama, the moveset, the bombast, uh, the ways in which it tests you to Sword Saint Ishin, and you can see how far they've come in figuring out how to push all of these ideas forward. That climactic duel. You know, further and further. Okay, so endings. We have Immortal Severance, which is pretty straightforward. The Divine Heritage is ended with the death of Kuro. Sekiro replaces the Sculptor. Uh, Purification ends with Kuro being cleansed of his immortality, but also it involves the severing of the Heritage through Sekiro's suicide. 
Uh, the Dragon's Homecoming ending sets up a sequel in which the Divine Child of Rejuvenation takes Kuro and the Dragon Heritage into herself. And she and Sekiro journey west to where the Divine Dragon came from, which that could be pretty cool. It's one of the clearest sequel hooks they've ever done. Uh, now, as far as things that this game got wrong that I hope that they address if they do a sequel to this, uh, I think Sekiro is the worst out of all of the From games at being an RPG. There is no facet of the character progression that's really interesting. Uh, there are very few skills that feel interesting, let alone worthwhile. Uh, so I would have invested most of the dragon and most of my points into the dragon tally board if I could have, if I could have gotten that earlier in the game. One weapon is simply not deep enough to justify itself, especially with how boring some of those skills are. Uh, the prosthetic tools likewise don't add enough enough depth and upgrading most of them isn't that enjoyable, nor are the upgrades usually different enough in how they function. It's really just tacking a modifier on, usually. Um, they give you utility, but not a lot of depth. And then send the money in this feels really inconsequential. All of this stuff just feels superfluous, you know? Like a big distraction. Sekiro would be exactly as good without any of it. So it just feels like wasted effort. Which you could also say like, uh, well, it's mostly inoffensive. Sekiro himself, I think, is fucking boring. They decided to use more dialogue to move the story forward and actually have a, a character who isn't just an empty vessel, and yet all he is is an empty ves a vessel who occasionally sounds like he is confused or bored. Which is somehow worse than him just being mute. Uh, wasted potential there, I think. Thematically, I also think it's a little bit all over the place. Like, there are mixed messages in here, because it sort of sounds like Miyazaki is saying, look, sometimes you have to let a good thing go and end. If not, you just keep doing the same thing over and over and you stagnate, but this game is doing the same thing over and over uh, with a little less depth. So I think what the game does well, it does exceptionally, but it's the same stuff that's been done exceptionally well before. There's just less of it? I don't know, maybe my read on that is wrong, but Miyazaki and From have been making these types of games exclusively for 10 years now. And it feels like From might be starting to stagnate. And honestly, like, I would love to see them spending a few years doing something else after... Uh, the new game with George R.R. R. Martin uh, was Elden Ring. Like a good four or five years off from this formula, just doing other things. Because I love all of these games, and I love Sekiro, despite all the flaws. I love them. I don't ever want to get tired of these types of games, because I love them so much. And I hope the level of passion and detail that goes into them never declines either, especially from being oversaturated or being the only thing that they really put out. Uh, as far as things like the game feel, though, the core of the combat system is so exceptional, and they're still second to none on crafting bosses, on doing level design, making it super fun to excavate lore. All of these things are still fucking great. I just hope they aren't getting bored of it. And if they are, I hope they do something else. So, that brings us to the end. As always, uh, thank you all so much. Make sure to check out the description for things like my Twitter link, my Patreon, my Twitch, all that stuff. And like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. And thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.